Hello, hello teachers, how are you? I know that you couldn't attend today's class because you're very busy, you have many situations, classes, and so on, so you couldn't attend today's class, but I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you learned a lot, and remember to type, uh, write your comments in Edmodo so that I can look at them, and if you have any question or doubt about this topic, I can handle it, and we can work together in order to, to understand better what we're looking at. Okay, so today is important class, because today is the last class for teaching, for language teaching, and at the same time, it's the last class for module one, okay? So you are done with module one. Uh, next class, we're going to try to summarize in a very quickly way, and I'm gonna leave you a sample test in, in here one more time in Edmodo so that anytime you have the chance you can do your test and I am also going to give you all the, the steps, all the, the rules for this exam, the time, what you need to take with you, how, how you need to fill the information and everything so that this could be as real as possible. Okay, but today we're going to continue talking about module one, part number three, background to language teaching, okay? So we have already talked uh, about activities, right? We have already talked about methods, about introductory activities, about task activities, and now we're going to finish with assessment, okay? We're gonna look at assessment at the very last part of TKT one more time, but so far this is the basis. So I will require all your attention. And uh, well, I just want to let you know that this is very important because it's the moment in which you encourage your students, in which, um, uh, let's say, uh, in which you have to give kind of a number or, or a letter in order to grade your students. Uh -huh. and, and this is the moment in which you need to find the best technique, the best aid in order to know if your learners are really learning, if what you are doing, uh, it's worth it, okay? So now, uh, let's start with this, okay? Uh, the unit, as I was telling you, is called assessment types and tasks. Okay, we're going to talk about assessment, kind of assessments, and at the same time, how you can assess a task. Okay, so uh, first we need to know what is assessment and what is assessment tasks. Assessment is judging learners' performance by collecting information about it. What is this? Well, we have different techniques in order to assess our students. You can just say, good, congratulations, well done. Uh, you did a good performance, that was okay, excellent. Or you can have a better or a more formal assessment, such as a test, right? Maybe you apply a test, uh, maybe you give a grade, you leave a project, uh, and so on. So that's assessment. What is assessment task? Well, basically it's evaluating activities through their requirements, okay? So as I was telling you, uh, a task, uh, maybe you will say, for the end of this course, you're going to write a complete paragraph about um, about your habits, habits and routines. Okay, what do you need to use? Well, present simple. Okay, that's the first requirement. The next, you need to apply or you need to write the adverse of sequency, adverse of frequency. So we have now three requirements. Uh, it has to be. Uh, it has to have the correct spelling of the words. So that's another requirement. It has to have more than 100 words, less than 150. So between 100 and 150. And then all these requirements are involved in these assessment tasks, which is not the same as a test or as a, another kind of just a little activity that they are performing during the classes. Okay, very good. Now, um, 
In this case, we also have assessment divided into two important categories. We have informal assessment and formal assessment. What is informal assessment? It's when we observe learners to see how well they are doing something and then often give them comments of their performance. As I was telling you, this is the moment in which you just say, hey, well done, continue like that. How, you did a good job. I'm very happy for you. Or maybe not that positive. Maybe you can say, you made a mistake in this, so please try to fix it. And uh, I don't know, like uh, your pronunciation is bad. Be careful with the R sounds, with the vowel sounds, and so on. Okay, so this is the informal assessment in which somehow you are telling the students what they need to improve, or somehow you are trying to let them know about what they need to be working on, but at the same time you are evaluating. Maybe you, you put a tick on your list, right? Like maybe he did a little bit bad or maybe a comment right he did a he did a little bit bad but it was okay i, I mean like he got the task or i don't know okay then the formal assessment is when we assess learners through exams and give their work a mark or a grade okay so this is a little bit as i was telling you more formal it has more to do with office stuff right like applying a test Okay, which will be evaluating the progress or, or, or the instant moment of a topic. Uh -huh. And also you will require a mark. For example, uh, in this case, TKT is formal assessment because you're going to apply an exam. Okay, and you're going to get a mark. In this case, it's graded by bands. Uh -huh. So if you get band four, that means that you have a good level of teaching. You have more or less or no not more or less you have a lot a lot of information related to teaching mm -hmm. so that's that's a formal assessment good informal assessment is like somehow what i do right because you do some exercises in in, in that model you answer to some quizzes you answer some stuff here but i am not grading you I am just taking my notes. I am just looking at the graphics about who is connecting or not, and that's it. But that's an informal assessment because I'm not saying, hey, Francisco, you got an A, or Caroline, you got a, a C in this case. No, 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 nothing like that. So it's informal. Mm -hmm. Now we continue. Now, I will start with formal assessment because um, it has like more subcategories and we need to be aware of the kind of tests as i was telling you is when we have examinations and most of the times they are they tend to be formal so for formal assessment we have first the diagnostic exam or diagnostic test what is this well it, it helps us to find out what students know and don't know usually applying at the beginning of a course Okay, so this is a test in which we can look or we can see how much the students know, if they are in the correct level uh -huh, or if they need some help, especially for, you know, like this, um, uh, these schools like secondary, high school, in which sometimes people or students from secondary that pass to high school, we don't really know what topics they saw in the secondary. We don't really know if they already know some basis of English or they are false beginners and so on. Now, we, all, we also have the placement test. What is this test? It's to decide what level of class the learners should go into. So in this case, and this is especially for, for, for example, for us that we teach in Celex, there are many students that say, well, uh, I want to enter to Celex, but I, uh, but I need to go or I want to go to the to highest level because I know a lot of English and, and I have practiced that and I've been abroad for two years and so on. So you, you, you might say, okay, that's okay. Thank you for telling me. But anyway, I need to apply a placement test because I know you are telling me that you have a good level, then show it to me. And then they do the placement test. And if they have the knowledge, they can be in the, in the uh, let's say, advanced levels. 
But if they don't prove that, then they will go to the lowest and so on. Okay, obviously that will depend on the school, that will depend on the on the situation, right? What kind of levels they have. Maybe they have eight, they have seven, six, I don't know. Okay, so this is the placement test. Now let's go with progress test. This is basically, or we use it to find out how learners have learned a part of a course. This is just for a part. Mm -hmm. For example, let's see. In this case, in this course, we are going to be divided into the three modules. Today, we're finished with module one. So your progress test is what you're going to do during this weekend and part of next week. Uh, because I want to know how you have progressed with this test, at, at least from this module one. Mm -hmm. And later on, maybe we will continue with other kind of tests, but that's it. This is very important because with this, I might be finishing one topic or in this case, the part of the course that is module one and that's it. For my assessment, we use information from assessment to feed into our teaching and maybe give learners feedback. Okay, what is this? Well, basically, they are formal and they can be marked or not. And in this case, you just have like a very short quiz. Sometimes you also call them like a, um, a surprising test in which the students go beyond what they saw. They answer some questions. And if the teacher sees that something is getting wrong or something is a little bit um, complicated for them, he will give feedback. Uh, so this uh, formative uh, assessment uh, basically is to get information, to get information for, from the students to see how well they are doing, how well they, they are learning the topics uh -huh, so that you can help them. That's why it's called formative, because you are forming the students little by little. If they haven't got a topic, then this is the moment in which you can recover that topic. Mm hmm now, continuous assessment, having a truer picture of how well the learners have learned, and it's less threatening and more formative than an end course exams. For example, composition in week two, a presentation in week four, an essay, a week in week six, etc. So the continuous assessment is not exactly a test. Okay, doesn't have to be exactly a test. Maybe it is just a, a continuum of working during weeks or months and so on. Okay, so maybe in this unit, I'm going to be evaluating with your test, but at the same time with an article. Mm -hmm. Then next week, I'm going to be evaluating, not, not with a test, but with a role play. Then the next week, I'm going to be evaluating with a test one more time, and then a, a, an essay and so on. So in this way of, of, of continuous assessment, you don't have to be like that with only with exams. You can have different strategies, different words continuously until the end of the course, instead of not, well, obviously you are doing something, but instead of not grading anything and just go until the last exam. Hmm? So this is continuous assessment. I think the majority of us that we are teachers, we know that we need to have a continuous assessment, right? We don't only evaluate with exams or it's very weird only to evaluate with the exams. Okay. At least I don't really use, do it. Uh -huh. I have like, I, I count all the signatures and homeworks and so on. So that that's part of continuous assessment. Okay. Very good. Now, another way for evaluating is not exactly with tests. We have checked the majority of them as tests. But in this case, we can also talk about portfolio. What is a portfolio? Well, it basically is a collection of learners' work during the course, which the learners put together during or at the end and then presents to the teacher. Okay, so you will ask, okay, you're going to investigate this and I want this signature and I want this project and so on. And then the students start collecting them, they start collecting all the, all these uh homeworks and and classwork and and photocopies and everything that you provide to them and then the teacher says at the end of each month you need to show me this portfolio or at the end of these two months or at the end of a unit or maybe at the end of a course 
everything that you collect, you're going to be, it's, it's going to be shown to me until the, the last day uh, or until the last day of evaluation. So that's basically portfolio, the collection of all the documents, uh, work uh, that the students can collect. Achievement test or summative test. At the end of a term or course, some teachers give learners a test to see how all they have learned these contents of the whole course. So right now you are going to do well, after this class and during this week, you're going to do a formative assessment. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's a prog progress test or uh -huh. it's a progress test, test because you're going to be applying for kind of the real module one. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the module one, module two and module three, you are going to have a summative test. Which we which will be evaluating the whole modules. Okay, so get ready for that. Don't 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 be scared. It's just to know in which module module you need to work more, in which you need to work maybe less, but they still continue practicing and so on. Uh -huh. Then we have the proficiency test. Uh, these are tests to see how good learners are at language with no specific content or based on a core syllabus. So the proficiency tests basically are the, the Cambridge exams, for example, CAT, PET, FCE, uh, proficiency, uh, TOEFL, TOEIC, um, another test. Well, all these tests that will be evaluating how you know the language but they don't have anything to do with a syllabus, not like that. So you don't have like a content based. It's what you know and you need to apply it and you need to express yourself. Mm -hmm. In this case, TKT, you have a course. Yes, you are preparing yourself and I am providing you with the best of, of the topics and, and with uh, try to summarize all these uh, concepts. But in the real exam, maybe you will be asked something that we didn't look at that, you know, like, like deeply, uh -huh, because that's how exams like these are, right? And so that's why it's very difficult to provide courses from CAD, PED, because we only give you the strategies. But at the end of the, or well, the, the day of the exam, you won't have the syllabus. Uh -huh. So be careful with that. Okay, now with this, that's okay. I hope it is okay, teachers. Remember, for formal assessment, we have diagnostic test, placement test, progress test, formative assessment, continuous assessment, portfolio, achievement test or summative test, and proficiency test. Now let's continue with tasks. Okay, remember that there are different kinds of tasks that like we can ask students. We can have choice questions, we can have interviews, gap feelings, able competition, okay? So, but remember that a task, the main um, idea of a task is what they are learning is useful for themselves inside and outside the classroom. It's not like a simple activity or an isolated activity. No, a task should be uh, keep in mind because those are important for students to remember or to practice. Uh -huh. And in this case, we have two types of tasks. We have objective tasks and subjective tasks. What is objective? Well, the marker does not have to judge whether an answer is right or wrong or how right or wrong the answer is because there is only an answer. Multiple choice, true, false, gap feelings, etc. One disadvantage is that they do not test the real use of the language. Okay, so you might you need to keep this in mind. An objective task is when we we as the markers, as the ones that are grading, uh -huh, we don't have to pay attention to the to the spelling. We don't have to pay attention if they are doing correct or not because you they are like options like they have options and there is only one answer a b c or d true or false or no information and that's it mm -hmm. or fill the gaps with can and can't and that's it okay so we already know the answers we don't need to to spend much time thinking about 
uh, thinking about what, what what will be the grade, uh -huh, because the answers are there. Whereas subjective task is all the opposite. Okay, in this case, the markers need to use their judgment to decide if an answer is right or how right it is. Role plays, essays, interviews, group discussions, compositions, etc. There are different ways to mark a task. For example, in an essay, you can evaluate tax achievement, use of register, organization. Okay, so as you can see, in this case, you as a as a as a person that is marking, you need to be very subjective because you need to evaluate through rubrics, through different aspects in which to give, in which you can give a, a fair, let's say, a fair uh, grade, right? Uh -huh. For example, in this case, an essay. The task achievement, what is a task achievement? Well, write an essay telling your opinion about natural disasters in, in Iguala, for example. Uh -huh. So you need to say, you need to give information, you need to investigate, that's a task achievement, okay, that you really give important information about natural disasters in Iguala. Or use of register, obviously, a city is an, a, an essay, it, is, it has to be formal. So avoid, please, contractions, avoid fresh adverbs, idioms, because they need to be formal. Organization, remember the structure, right, of uh, the format. Let's say uh, we have an introduction, then the thesis, then the body, then the conclusion, the references, uh, by uh, the biography, by biography, and so on, All right? So everything like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, in this case, the subjective task, you need to be aware of how you're marking. Okay, so here are some task types and news in informal assessment. Sorry, informal assessment. Okay, for example, for reading, truthful questions, yes, no questions, multiple choice questions, open comprehension questions. So, for example, in these three ones, if they are part of a task, have the first three are objective and the next one open comprehension question is subjective because that's what you understand about the text uh-huh order in paragraphs or paragraphs uh, choosing titles test paragraphs close test in writing copying jumble words labeling form feeling listening true false and so on Okay, so um, later on, I'm going to be uploading this video. So if you have the chance to look at all these activities, all, the, all these tasks, that will be really awesome because you will, you will notice, uh -huh, you will, and you will try to analyze which ones can be subjective, which ones can be objective, or which one can be both. Uh -huh. For example, form feeling, right? Form feeling can be subjective, Sorry, objective, because maybe you have the options, like right above, you have the options and you just have to put them in the correct uh, part of the form. But maybe they are uh, subjective because you are telling them to give the format of a form and then fill it. Okay, so please, students, uh, do a form to go traveling. Let's imagine how will the form will be with name, surname, and, and uh, I don't know, date of birth, and so on. Uh -huh. But then the students might create it. So in this case, this can be both, right? Mm -hmm. So please, I hope you find the time to, to look and, anal and analyzing at them. Okay? And now... We have already talked then to formal. We have already talked about tasks. And now we're going to go to the easiest part that is the informal assessment. Okay. And as I was telling you, unlike formal assessment, informal assessment does not use assessment task and is rarely used to give the learner a grade. Uh -huh. So forget about the task, forget about the grades, okay? A teacher might observe a class doing group work, for example, to judge their general level of fluency or watch them doing a project work to see how motivated they are or how well they work together. So basically, you are just a guider, 
right? You just go through the classroom, you you go and you say, may I help you? Do you need anything? Or maybe they are expressing themselves in a debate and you don't interrupt. Just at the end, maybe you give some comments or you just praise the students like, hey, well done. You did a good job. I'm very happy for you. Or maybe you are correcting, hey, you make this mistake. So, so please correct it right now at this moment. Or maybe I would like you to use more uh, more uh, formal language or more informal language, use more chunks, like in my opinion, as far as I know, and so on. So this is the informal assessment. Uh -huh. Learners can also carry out informal assessments. For example, this is very curious because they can have self-assessment, which means assess themselves. Uh -huh. So many, many teachers do so. I personally don't do it because it's very hard for students to grade themselves. I have had many situations in which the students, I don't know teacher really, I, I got frustrated because I don't know if I deserve an eight or I deserve a 10. And I say, well, look at you, what, how, much, how much work have you done? Um, how, I don't know if you did all the homework, so you participate in classes and so on. Uh -huh. So this is very hard. I don't normally um, have self-assessment, but I know many teachers that is kind of useful for them. And also we have peer assessment, which is assesses one each other. Uh -huh. For example, in a project they are presenting and then you ask the, their own classmates to evaluate their presentation according to their own criteria and so on. And this is what we're going to talk about, the assessment criteria. Okay, what are some aspects that you can assess? Uh, either for formal, informal, for tasks, never mind, for self-assessment, for peer assessment. Okay, these are kind of some of the aspects of the criteria that we as teacher can, can be evaluating class per class with our students. We can evaluate fluency, using language accurately, using language language appropriately, uh, interactive strategies, pronunciation, vocabulary range, discourse organization, uh -huh, and so on. Okay, so this criteria will depend on the teacher, will depend on the syllables, will depend on the activity. But basically you need to be aware on this. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show you a chart in which you have uh, I, I know later on, we're going to talk about rubrics. Okay, we know that, that we have some holistic, holistic rubrics and so on. Right now, we're going to look at just at this rubric because I don't want you to get confused, but basically it's the way of evaluation. So here in this case, I am evaluating as a teacher, I am evaluating three aspects, accuracy, fluency, and pronunciation. So as you can see, this is a normal activity. Mm -hmm. Okay, the lowest point, it is one, almost unable to communicate. You know, all these students that they don't pronounce the words correctly, they don't have fluency, they say Spanish, they made a combination about Spanish and English and so on. Whereas the highest, for example, it's five, grammatical and lexical accuracy extremely high. So all the forms, the time tenses, the spelling is correct or are correct. It speaks fluently without hesitation or searching for words. Okay, so that means that there is no hesitation at all. They are not looking for words. They can speak quickly and with the correct volume and so on. Pronunciation, very clear. Stress and intonation help to make meaning clear. So they don't only pronounce correct, but they also use stress and intonation. Okay, so this is kind of a way you can evaluate. And even you can take this chart whenever you are evaluating, you are assessing your students in, in this case, in oral things. Uh -huh. But you can also have it with writing and even with listening and, and, and reading, even though it is not very common, you can also have it. Okay, so, so far so good teachers. I hope you are okay. I hope you could understand this topic. And uh, well, this is about assessment. Now let's go with your practice, okay? This is it. Sample test for questions from one to six. 
match the teacher's description of assessment tasks with assessment task feature listed from A, B, and C. You will need to use some of the options more than once. So as you can see, here we have the three options, but here we have six sentences. So maybe subjective, which is related to tasks, might, might fit in three and five, for example. Mm -hmm. Very good, teacher. So you have 10 minutes from now to do this, this test. Remember, if you finish earlier, you can advance the video so that you can get at the exact point and you can check your answers. Okay, so 10 minutes, start now, please.
Okay, teachers, time's up. And anyway, if you haven't finished, you can get more time. Or if you have already finished, which I hope so, uh, well, we will check the answer so that you can see how well you did. And I'm sure you did very, very well. Okay, for number one, it's letter C. It's a subjective. Why? I have to give my student a test at the end of the year so the students can get a grade. So remember, uh -huh, in this case, sorry, it is it is C, sorry, formal, right? Because remember that formal assessment implies tests. Uh -huh. I asked the student to do a multiple choice test from their course book then mark it themselves with an answer key. They didn't show me their results. So in this case, it's B, objective, okay? Why? Because, well, basically the student is the one that is, uh, we only had one option because that's why here it says the answer key. Uh -huh. So in this case, the students are the ones that are showing the options, they are dealing with them and so on. Number three, the students discuss a topic in groups and I listen to get an impression of their level. In this case, it's subjective, right? Because then I, me as a teacher, I am evaluating this time. I am the one who is going to give a grade. I am the one who's paying attention and so on. The student listen to one another giving presentations and give feedback on them. One more time, subjective, okay? Because it's a little bit uh, more formal. I will need to have a range of, of the presentation and me as a teacher, I need to provide feedback to them. Uh -huh. I often ask my students to do a short field tasks, which there is only one answer to. They keep a record on their scores. One more time, in the previous one, for example, we didn't have any options because it's a presentation. We just need to evaluate. But in the fifth one, we have uh, we have only uh, one, one option, okay? So there is only an answer. And finally, six, the students heard basically of work through their for me to mark. So that C, that is formal. Uh -huh. So in this case, it's the student's work and I need to mark and I need to give them the, the grade. So I just want you to remark teachers this, that you need to find the, the keywords. Okay, for example, in the last one, we have mark. And whenever we have mark, that means that they are requiring a letter or a number. So this is formal. Uh -huh. Like in the first one, get a grade. So maybe this can these keywords can help you to understand about this. Uh -huh. Or for example, in this one, there's only one answer. So whenever we know that we have answers, we have options, it is objective, right? Okay, because it doesn't imply us to be the ones that are evaluating. We already know we all the, the things or the pieces of work have answers, okay? So I hope this can be clearer. And if you have, by any chance, if you have comments, questions about this class, please write to me and we can discuss about this next class, okay? So, so far, that's all by me. And I hope you enjoyed today's class. And well, I hope you can do the activities. As I was telling you, I will be uploading the sample test of module one. Okay, so I hope you can look at it and uh, well, see you, see you next class. We will get in touch in Edmodo and well, I hope you have a nice weekend. If you are looking this today or tomorrow, have a nice weekend. If you are looking this on Monday or Tuesday, I hope you have an excellent beginning of week. Okay, so goodbye teachers. Thank you very much and see you next time. Bye-bye.